Hey everyone, I'm going to be showing you how to make a three-dimensional sphere using value. So first things first, you're going to need a pencil, um, preferably one with an eraser. You can also use a mechanical pencil. Keep in mind that using mechanical is a little more difficult because of the lead being thinner and I don't have any lead. So I'm using a soft HB number two pencil. Doesn't have to be anything fancy, it could be just one that you got from the regular store, dollar store, dollar tree, whatever. Alright, so when we are trying to make something look three dimensional, we have to use what we call value. Value is one of the seven elements of art. Value is actually the lightness and darkness within a picture. So anything that you see that has a shadow is showing you that it has value. Okay, so just quick demonstration showing you how to add value with your pencil. You just kind of shade it in, light and dark, depending on how light or dark you want it. Okay, so we're actually going to make a value scale. So we're going to start off with a rectangle. And once you draw your rectangle, you're going to add in a couple of vertical lines to split it off into sections. I went ahead and I split it off into five different sections. The first one here is going to be our lightest value. The last one will be the darkest. And then the one in the middle is our medium. So our darkest value is actually black. Lightest will be white. And the middle will be gray. Okay. So when you're using your pencil and you're shading, depending on if you're holding it towards the front of your pencil or the back of the pencil, actually changes the way your pressure of your shading is. So when we start shading, if you want your values to be lighter, you're going to have lighter pressure. Then of course, if you want your values to be darker, you're going to have harder pressure. So basically, the pressure that you use when you're writing, since it's like a gray, <clears throat> it should be more or less in the middle. So that's like a medium pressure. So I'm going to start with my light, not the first one, because it's white, I'm going to start with the second one. So I'm moving my hand towards the back of the pencil, and also notice I'm shading from the very top of my section all the way down to the bottom. If you don't do it this way, what ends up happening is when you overlap your shade, it ends up creating a darker shade because it's a overlapping. So when I went into the next section, the gray, I went ahead and I moved my hand forward on my pencil. So here we actually have three different values. And so when we have different values that are next to each other, we call this contrast. So contrast is basically the term that we use for difference. So whenever we have contrast, that means we can see a difference in the values that we have in our value scale. So it's not a smooth transition, it's kind of choppy. So each different section is a different shade or a different value. <clears throat> so again, moving on to the next section, we have contrast, they are different. I'm moving my hand forward on my pencil, so that way my pressure gets harder and it's creating a darker value, okay? So now that we've got all of our values in our sections, this is what we call a value scale. <clears throat> all right. So value scale, you have to understand how to use a value scale in order to make something three-dimensional. For instance, if we take a circle <clears throat> and we want to change this two-dimensional circle, into a three-dimensional sphere, we have to use value. <clears throat> and when we use value, we have five different types of light. And so the first type of light 
that we see when we're using our value is our highlight. And this is the lightest spot on our object. The second light is called transitional light. <clears throat> and so our transitional light is kind of like what it says. So highlight being our lightest is going to be our white. That's the first section of our value scale. Transitional light is going to be the grays. It's all of those different values that you have in the middle. <clears throat> and it's transitioning from the highlight to the core of the shadow, which is the third type of light. <clears throat> and so this type of light is actually the darkest spot that we have on our object. So it's basically the opposite of where our highlight would be. The fourth type of light is an odd one, one that everyone usually forgets. And this is called our reflected light. So the reflected light is basically the light that is reflecting off of the surface onto our object. And it's not the darkest, but it's not the lightest either. It's kind of an in-between. And then of course our very last type of light, which is our casted shadow. This is the shadow that's being casted from the object onto the surface. And so on the scale, from the value scale, it's always going to be the darkest. Mm. All right, so using these five types of light from our value scale, showing those differences, we're going to actually create a sphere from a circle, a two-dimensional circle. So from a two-dimensional circle, now I always tell my students, if you continue to trace a circle, you're never going to learn how to draw your own circle. So. Draw your circle, go over it a couple of times, as light as you can make it, and then you can trace over it to make it darker when you're ready. <clears throat> and then of course those two vertical lines that I put there, or horizontal lines, I'm sorry, that I put there, that's just our surface. So that's just the surface that it's sitting on. So when we start with these types of light, or adding it to our object, we have to have a light source. And so a light source is basically anything that's creating light and directing that light onto our object. So we have to decide where do we want our light source to be coming from. <clears throat> so I went ahead and I drew a little flashlight aiming towards my circle. <clears throat> okay. And so we have to imagine that this flashlight is creating a beam of light. And this, these beams, the ends of your beams from the light are shining directly onto the edges of your circle. So I went ahead and lightly drew them out. <clears throat> and again, you have to make sure that the beam is to the edge of your circle. So starting with our highlight, we have to figure out where this beam of light is hitting our object first. So I went ahead and I drew a little oval, nice and lightly, to show that that's where the highlight is going to be on my object. And remember, we don't shade anything in because it's going to be white. We want it to be our lightest. The transitional light <clears throat> is all of these grays that are in between. So we're going to draw a series of ovals that are bigger around the oval for our highlight. <clears throat> so I only drew, I think, three. Depending on how big your circle is, depends on how many of those transitional light sections you're going to have. And so remember, when we create and we add <clears throat> these different types of light onto your object, all you're basically doing is adding a value scale onto your object. And so since we started off with white, we're going to add a little bit of pressure to the first section of transitional light, then a little bit more. And so each different section actually changes and gets a little bit darker as it transitions and moves away from your light source or from your highlight. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so now our core of the shadow. So this is the darkest spot that we have on our object. So this last little section here is going to be the darkest. Remember, it's not the darkest from the value scale. It's just the darkest on your object. So it should not be black. It should be like the darkest gray. 
<clears throat> and then the reflected light. <clears throat> this one's a little tricky. So we have to remember that the reflected light is is not the darkest, not the lightest, not in the middle. It's kind of an in-between. And so in order to do this, we're just going to use our eraser. And it's the light from our light source bouncing off of our surface onto the bottom or onto the back of our object. So using the eraser, <clears throat> we're just going to erase a tiny little sliver here on the back end or on the bottom of our circle. Remember, you don't want to erase it completely to where it turns white. Okay, We don't want it to be white because white is our highlight. We just want it to be a little bit lighter so that way we can see a bit of a reflection onto the surface of our, our circle. <clears throat> Remember, we don't want it too light, so don't make it white. Now for our casted shadow. So the casted shadow is probably the easiest. All you basically have to do is put the most pressure and create almost like a elongated circle underneath your circle that you've added all the values to. So I kind of made it to where my shadow disappeared. You don't have to do that but you can, it kind of looks cooler. So now I'm just going back <clears throat> and I'm making sure that I don't see a separation between each of my sections. So I'm super light pressure, going back over, adding a little bit more value where those lines are that separate my different sections. So that way it starts to transition nice and smoothly. We want it to blend nicely. If you have a bunch of stripes, your sphere is going to end up looking like it has a bunch of stripes on it. So again, just going back over, smoothing it out, making sure <clears throat> with my pressure that my sections blend nicely. So here I'm just going back and I'm showing you how to apply those five types of light without drawing out the sections. And so you can kind of see how it transitions on its own. I use really light pressure throughout the whole thing first and then I just layer after layer after layer keep adding values to it until it's the nice dark value that I want it to be. <clears throat> this is probably a little more advanced. If you have more of an understanding and more knowledge of how to create values and how to use values, this is how you would do it. Um, <clears throat> if you're a beginner, this is the first time you, you've ever applied value to something to make it three-dimensional. I suggest you go the route from the first one, finding that light source, figuring out where each section is from your value scale, where each type of light is, and then drawing it all out and then adding the values inside of it. <clears throat> Again, this second sphere that I'm creating is just from, from sight. I, I just kind of looked at it. And you can kind of see the one that doesn't have all of the sections drawn out looks a little more realistic than the one that does. But again, that's more advanced. So if you're a beginner, make sure you start off with the first sphere. So that way you can get a hang of where those values actually have to go. Because if you don't know where the values go, you're going to have a hard time trying to put those values in there without knowing how it's supposed to transition. <clears throat> okay, and so now for the casted shadow. This one's a little bit different because my light source isn't so much above my sphere. It's almost like it's in front of it. And so my shadow changes just a little bit. <clears throat> and that's pretty much it. And so you can kind of see I, I took my, my video and I'm just zooming in, getting closer to the drawing, to the picture, so that you can actually see how the, the strokes and like the blending actually works. So like this one, I tend to scribble when I'm adding my values, so you can kind of see how my scribbles kind of like overlap with each other. You can see where they end, you can see where the highlight, they kind of like stand out <clears throat> but when you notice as you get farther away from my sphere or away from my values those lines start to disappear and the reason why they start to disappear like that is because there's so much less pressure than 
it needs to be. Okay, <clears throat> that's it. I hope you liked this video. I hope it was educational. I hope you learned something and you'll be able to use it. Like this video, subscribe to my channel, and thanks for watching.